to Jay Triano. Honor and wisdom it was a huge part of the philosophy and how I was raised as a boy. It meant a lot in our home. It was funny to me because a lot of these people, especially in the schools, you know, they thought I came from a ghetto or something. Or, you know, Jamaican kid, you know, he must be poor or something like that. But we never lived that life. We are just like any other immigrant coming here. We're, we're just as proud and, and just want to be given a chance to succeed. He really wanted to go to the States because he understood that by going there, he could, he could maybe further his, his career. And from then on, he was, he was actually recruited and it was seen by Rick Pitino. At that time, was the coach of Boston University. Tony in university was, right, he was a great, was a great scorer. He did all these things. Our, our national team for years had a lot of guys that were CIS players or guys that played in Canada. And Tony was one of the first guys to get a scholarship to go to the United States and come back. To, to get to the Olympic team, and to be at the Olympics and doing that, that for us was the pinnacle. You know, most people talk about being the USA in the semifinals. You know, we beat the team with Charles Barkley, you know, Carl Malone, uh, Johnny Dawkins, and we had the confidence that we could take that team and we led them really from start to finish. When I saw him play against Michael Jordan, Tony was actually the only guy that could actually even stay with him. Nobody else in the team could actually do that. Tony wanted Michael Jordan. That's what he wanted. He wanted, to play. he wanted to guard Michael Jordan. He wanted a piece of Michael Jordan. He had the confidence to, to challenge him. And he had the athleticism to do that too. This guy's amazing. You know, like he was on that stage. He was in the Olympics. Are you kidding me? Michael Jordan was playing chess and everybody else was playing checkers. Somebody from our community that was on the world stage and was going head to head with this guy, Michael Jordan, I'm like, man, he must be good. Tony was a very tough uh, defensive player. He's going to put everything he can on the floor. He and I guarded each other all the time, and I had a real hard time with him, and uh, it made me accelerate my game. And uh, he was one of our defensive stoppers. We needed to stop somebody, we put Tony Sims off. It's not that I was better than you. It's that you're not going to score on me no matter what. And if you can't score on me, you're in trouble. And that was my mentality. He would defend people and he would just not even let you get the ball over half court. If there were more of him, then basketball would have been accelerated in this country a lot further than it did. I think we had great teams and great players, but we sure didn't have the great athletes like Tony was. Tony was actually ahead of his time, and he stood out because of that. And his legacy was, I'm going to play basketball, but I'm also going to leave something for somebody else. Now you start to see as the years are passing and Jamal McGlure starts to come along. And knowing that Tony not only was a performer on the court, but knowing what he was in the community. He was teaching, he had basketball programs, he was coaching. You know, we want to inspire the next generation to have goals and experiences like we have. I would just hate for anything to get lost with, you know, the current generation. Um, because somehow, well, he wasn't in the NBA, he wasn't doing it. At that time, he was at the pinnacle. Like Doc Ryan, like Dwight Walton, uh, Wayne Yearwood were pioneers in the sense of, you know, bringing diversity into Canada basketball.